We're moving on to natural selection 1.3, exploring variation and distribution in population. I'm going to introduce you to our digital model, the natural selection simulation. The reason scientists use digital models, like the sim that we're about to use, is that it allows them to look at things that are too big or too small, or in our case, take a really long time. If we want to look at populations and how they change, it takes hundreds and thousands and millions of years for the population to change, but we can see changes in a very short amount of time in the sim. If you're able to log in, go ahead to 1.3 Activity 2 and launch the natural selection simulation and follow along. We're going to explore the sim and get to see what tools it has. If you're trying this exploration at home, what I want you to consider is what do the different buttons do? What do you notice about what you can change? And are there any questions? If you're not able to log in, don't worry, I'll take you through the sim. This is my cat, Akimbo. He's decided to join us for the next little part while we explore the sim. There are four main things that you need to know about the sim. The first two are in the build mode. There are two different things that you can build. You can build abiotic and biotic. So abiotic factors are all the non-living parts of the sim. The temperature, the rainfall, and the surface color. The second thing to know in the build mode is that you can change the biotic factors. We have three organisms in our environment. We have thorn palms, australopes, and carnivons. We'll look at all of them closer in a little bit. The thing to know though is they have different traits and we'll look at differences in those traits. The third piece to this in is the run mode. This is where you see what happens based on the environment that you've set up. And the final step is the analyze phase. So this is where you look at your populations and their different traits, and you can see how they changed over time as well. Now that you've seen the tools in the sim, let's try it out. So I click on run, and I can see our different organisms. So I've got australopes are the little bird-like creatures, carnathons are the big red meat eaters, and the thorn palms are the trees. So these organisms aren't real, but they're based on real organisms. The idea being that you have a plant that does photosynthesis, an organism that eats plants, and an organism that eats other animals. They need energy in order to survive, and they also reproduce. So we can use these organisms to look at changes over time. Now we're gonna try some missions in the sim. Again, if you're logged in, go ahead, pause this video and try them on your own. But if you're not logged in, don't worry, I'll take you through the missions right now. Our first three missions are all about the thorn palms. So I'm going to turn off the australopes and the carnathon so that I can focus on our thorn palms. Okay, so my first mission with the thorn palms is to have all of them have medium thorns. So I look at their thorn size and I can see all of them have medium thorns. So then I look around at them and I can see these little spikes on them and the size thorns that they have. So the second mission is to have many different sizes of thorns. Okay, so I look down here and I see this little bar that says variation. If I move it over to low variation, now I can see that I have a few different thorn sizes. If I move it over to medium, then I have even more different thorn sizes. If I move it over to high, then I can see that I have all the different thorn sizes. So I look at this, and now this one has thorn size 10, so I can see it's really spiky. Kind of reminds me of my cousin when I had a mohawk. Right, and here's another, this one is thorn size seven, thorn, another thorn size seven, right? And so I can see that we have a different size thorns. This one is a thorn size four, and I can see it has barely any spikes on it at all. Our third mission with the thorn palms is to have many short thorns, sh short thorn palms, a few that are medium and none that are tall. So I'm gonna leave them with a lot of variety with their thorn size, and I'm gonna switch to height. So right now they're all the same height. If I wanna have many that are short, a few that are medium and none that are tall, I'm gonna bump up my variation a little bit to medium, but now it's kind of spread out and most of them are medium, but I want most of them to be short. So I'm gonna drag this over and then you can see that more of them are now gonna be short. A few of them will be medium and none will be tall. So now I look at this one and it's a short little thorn palm. And so I can see this, these differences in the height of the thorn palm. Our next two missions are with the australopes. So I'm going to get rid of the thorn palms and I'm going to bring our australopes back. So our first one is to change the color of the australopes. So I'm gonna to switch to the color and I can see right now I have no variation in the color. 
and so they're all color number five. So I look at this and color number five looks like a green. So I want to have blue, green, and yellow. Okay, so if I move the variation up more, now I can see this one's yellow. So this is color number eight. Okay, so yellow is a higher number. Green still yellow is number five. So that's in the middle is green. Let's see if I can find some other colors. Oh, here's kind of a blue. So this is color number three. So what I figured out is the low numbers, these are blues, the middle numbers are greens, and the high numbers are yellows. Then I want to make it so that one of my features of the Australopithe has a lot of variation and one feature has no variation. So I'm going to try armor. So right now the armor has no variation, so I'm going to make it so it has a lot of variation. Okay, so then when I look at the Australopithe, I can see these little spikes on their back and how much armor it has. Oh, I can't really see the spikes on that one. Here we go. There's some, oh, uh, there's some big spikes on that one. So that is the armor nine. Right, so it's got some big spikes on it. So I have lots of variation in the armor. And then neck length, I have no variation. So all of their necks are the same length. Our last two missions are with the Carnathons. So I'm going to remove the Australopes and bring the Carnathons back. I'm going to zoom out a little bit until I oh, can find some Carnathons. There we go. Okay. And what I want to look at is having a lot of fur and some with medium fur. So I already figured this out with the Australopes that in order to get that, I want to move to medium variation. And this time, instead of moving the distribution to the left, like I did before, this time I'm going to move it to the right. And so I can see the Carnathons now have a bunch of fur on them and some of them have a little bit less, right? So most of them have a lot of fur and a little, some of them have less fur. Okay. And our last challenge with the Carnathons is to have the maximum variation possible. So I'm going to go with poison resistance and I'm going to go with the maximum variation. And so they each have a different amount of poison level resistance. So this one's a level nine, which means that it can withstand a lot of poison. This one's eight, so it can also withstand a lot of poison. Let's see if we can find one. Poison resistance two, which means that it can't stand up to much of the Australope poison. Those are all the missions for today, but in future lessons, we'll look at the organisms interacting with each other and see how their populations change over time.